um, the, 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 the background to what brought me to that, to that specific point in time, that moment in time, was um, a childhood that was extremely broken, a very, very broken childhood. Um, my, my, my father was a uh, diagnosed as uh, well, what was now called bipolar. You know, um, so for the, for a child, he, he he we never had you know as his children, we never had a sense of consistency with him. Um, and I was talking about this funny enough with my partner the other day, and she pointed out that really uh, a situation like that for a child. Um, sets a kid up for drug addiction or some kind of addiction because you get the highs and it's all great and daddy's loving and then he's gone and he's either cold or and so the kid is constantly trying to get this good thing you know so when dad was good he was great he'd take us out to the iron islands youth hosting and would cycle and would climb mountains and it was it was really great and then he'd be like this completely cold, emotionless person. <clears throat> Both parents died by the time I was 10 years old. Her father committed suicide. My mother just literally died. You know, sort of had a, an emotional, physical, immune system collapse. And, you know, and she died right in front of our faces there in the house. You know, that was like um, for a 10 year old kid and, you know, surrounded by my little brothers and sisters. And, you know, it's not a very healthy thing. Um, and, Oh, a, a ten-year-old child will suppress this and pack it all away, but it's going to come out eventually. And of course, it started to come out in my late teens and so on. So you, you know, the, 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 that's kind of, if you like, the pattern that was set uh, that set me up for the whole Scientology thing. That was it. And within months, I was uh, so that within months then of, of of that introduction to Scientology, I was full time on staff there. I'd sort of cut myself off from my friends and my my, my girlfriend or partner. Actually, we're living together. Um, my only circle had become Scientology, and that's part. That's partly their effort. Oh, in fact, that's very much their effort, actually, to be able to, when they saw someone was like that, someone who was susceptible to Scientology, you know, they'll go for it, they'll grab him. One of the things I observe now is that um, the staff member in a Scientology organization is kept quite hungry, if you like. They, they're kept under extreme pressure. Um, they, they are run on statistics, and each person has to have his statistic. So if you're a body rooter, it's number of people rooted that day, okay? Uh, and if you're an evaluator, it's number of people evaluated, or whatever, you know, various statistics that people would have. But the pressure in Scientology to have up statistics is huge. It is just massive pressure. Um, so a body would remind you five people one day will, uh, well, statistics are done the week actually, you know. So if in the week that person body rooted 30 people, they'll get a big clap on the back and that's great. But next week they're better 32. And if the uh, organization is, uh, is, is, say, trying to play, trying to win what they call a birthday game, it's one of these games that the Scientology kind of implements. Uh, organization plays against organization in order to become number one in what's called the birthday game. And this is Hubbard's birthday. If it's on the birthday game, then that person has to get what's called an affluent statistic. So a little blip up is called normal. Um, a big shooting up of the statistic, like say you go from 30 to 40, you know, say people body rooted in or something, you know. That's a big blip up on 30, right? 10 is a big number, um, which is grand. But then the week after it, you know, are you going to crash that statistic? Or actually, you should keep that statistic going up again. So then the week after that, you have to get 42. And 
so you know you can imagine the price with the amount of work that has to be done in order to do this thing um, and yeah you can make your statistics drop but my god you get in trouble for that in Scientology it's, it's you know you get interrogated you get um, I won't go into these ethics conditions now, but you get in trouble for doing that. So the, you know, so when a person like me comes along, I'm kind of easy pickings, and you know, and there's all this pressure cooker of stuff going on, and so this guy says, "Oh great, there's no I'm going to have no problem selling him a book." The course person, I'm going to have no problem getting him on course. Great, I need that statistic. You know, so you get jumped on. You know, imagine a bunch of crows hopping on a piece of dead meat or something, you know, like, my heck, like that, you know. So I found myself pulled all these directions in Scientology, join staff, you know, um, do this course, uh, buy this book, buy these tapes, um, you know, uh, help out on this project. And all of a sudden, you know, the, you know, all these things are going on, it's all very new to me, and my whole life has been sucked up. Uh, two months later, I find myself, um, I'm in the Scientology Center from, oh, I don't know, let's say 9 o'clock in the morning till about maybe 11.30 at night, some cases, yeah. Um, no contact with my friends uh, in my, in my uh, little kind of house I'd rented. Um, there was like another three Scientologists living there with me. Do you know, this kind of thing. So all that stuff is going on. The goal, <coughs> that you get, you get sold a couple of goals in Scientology on the initial level, um, your soul, the goal of clear, okay, that is, uh, you're educated to the fact that there is, a, is what's called a bridge to freedom, which is a series of steps, if you like, up to a higher state. <clears throat> you get educated to the fact that you and the human race is in a bad state, and, the, uh, uh, and you get sold on this concept very hard. The initial book that you read is called Dianetics. In fact, centers like I walked into are normally called Dianetic centers as opposed to Scientology centers. The reason being to disguise the Scientology end of things because it, it never had good public relations. You get sold the idea of, of what's in Dianetics and then the, you almost get the idea that part of your mind, your mind is split in two parts. There's a sort of conscious level that's seething with evil and pain and horror and strange sexual perversions and you get this idea, this whole image is kind of really, really laid in on you and that you have uh, these things called engrams and an engram is a moment of unconsciousness. Yet what Hubbard is preaching is that the this part of the mind, what's called the reactive mind, it never actually goes unconscious. It actually is recording everything all the time, but acting on it in a very simplistic way. So he divides the mind to the reactive and the analytical. And he says the analytical mind, which is the mind, let's say the mind I'm talking with now, if we're using Hubbard's system or Hubbard's framework, uh, that's the analytical mind, and that's the grand, and it's working, it's able to think and everything, but then down below it, there's this subconscious mind. And if in a moment of pain or unconsciousness, my analytical mind shuts off, because it's a more delicate system, then the reactive mind comes into full play, and is recording everything that's happening, and is supposed to, I don't know, do something to protect the human, or the animal, or whatever it is, right? Um, but it acts upon things in a very simplistic way so that uh try, let's try and give an example if somebody one of the examples hubbard uses in, in dianetics is say the woman who gets um uh, say she gets beaten by her husband knocked unconscious by her husband right and then around the, there's a number of things happening there's him shouting at her saying you're a stupid useless you know, prostitute or a whore or something, right? There's the sound of a tap dripping, there's a car going by, there's the noise of a chair falling, there's the sensation of her hitting, her head hitting the floor, different things like that. And he says, all this stuff's been recorded in, in full 
um, you know, full color and sound and everything. It's all recorded there.